Praful Bora, Senior Research Analyst, Pharma at Nirmal Bang joins us right now on the show. Praful, good having you. Thanks for joining in. <coughs> Before we talk about the fundamental view that you may have on a few stocks, uh, what's happening with Wokhan and Rand Baxi? Seemingly, everything that had FDA concerns attached to them have rallied the last two days. Uh, well, I'm as clueless as you are, uh, you know, but uh, having said that, so uh, if you take Renbaxi and Bocard, I'm not expecting any sort of a fundamental move in these stocks. Uh, see, so Renbaxi, uh, Diavan has been expected for a pretty long time now, and I think that would be the only trigger. In Bocard, I don't see any major product coming in in the near term, and probably, uh, you know, the only trigger which, they, which is there in uh, Bocard in the near term is probably the approval of uh, Shendra. And from what I learned from my sources is that the inspection is yet to happen at uh, the USFD inspection is yet to happen at Shendra. So I don't think so. You know, I'm not able to really link both these, uh, you know, the, the movement in the stock uh, to the fundamentals. But having said that, uh, you know, if you one common pattern which is noted in uh, all the stocks uh, which have been moving in the last couple of days is, uh, you know, all these have some sort of a problem with the FDA. So probably. You know, you take Wokard, Renbaxi, Strides, Arcolab, you know, all these uh, companies, all these names have some sort of a problem with the FDA. So I think probably someone is expecting, uh, you know, something to come up from uh, you know, that angle that that can be the case. But uh, I, I really can't link it to the fundamentals. I'm not, not able to do it. Awan, you remember Ajay's story yesterday, which spoke about how Glenmark's, Glenmark's plant as yeah. well is going to get uh, that USFDA approval. approval. It's a new plant, but it's going to get the approval. Right. So, yeah, maybe maybe that's the thing, that people now expect that all of these things will get start getting sorted. And there's the a buzz other. of some tie-ups as well. I mean, you never yeah. know what actually materializes. But, but, so. but that's the point, Praful. What do, what do people, traders or investors, do with these stocks? Because these are beaten down on precisely those concerns, FDA, uh, FDA concerns. Would you, as a fundamental analyst, recommend uh, a buy, as risky as it may be, into any of these stocks? Uh, so in terms of the worst that can happen to these stocks, uh, I think it's already there, you know, I mean, so Vokhart, they have already uh, Shikal Thana, their Waluj plants already under the scanner. Uh, the only plant which remains now is China and that is also new approval. So I think in terms of the worst that can happen from the FDA, I think it's already there in the price. The same goes for Anbaxi, they have, uh, you know, barring uh, the Ohm Labs which is there in the US, uh, they have all their plants and, uh, you know, in India which is under the FDA scanner. So I don't see any more negativity coming in from here on. Uh, but having said that, uh, you know, what will take the stock up in the near term i don't see much much triggers but if you have if you're taking a slightly longer term view probably from a two three years perspective then i would definitely recommend you know entering these names because the valuations are pretty okay now uh, so if you have a slightly longer term view then it makes a lot of sense to enter now but uh, if you if you're thinking anything which is near term i don't think so that anything major will materialize apart from diavan which is there in and backseat what about Sun Pharma? I mean, there seem to be some inherent fears that there may be some, you know, uh, the FDA is going to target some of the other facilities in the near term. Would you, uh, would you be worried about that? Uh, so I, usually FDA does not, uh, you know, superimpose uh, one the problems with one facility to the others. You know, so I don't think so. It is linked in any way. You know, every facility is an independent inspection. Uh, but having said that, I think the, the reason why Sun Pharma is probably underperforming is uh, because of competition in two of its key products, uh, you know, which contributes close to around 22-23% of their profits, uh, which is Doxil and Doxycycline. You know, so JNG has re resumed their uh, supplies for Doxil uh, and I think that is one concern which is there in the street. That probably they will start eating away the market again from uh, Sun Pharma and even in Doxycycline we have seen higher uh, competition entering in. So I think that is the concern, uh, uh, you know, which I would uh, probably be more worried about uh, than, you know, the US FDA linking this, uh, this problem with Karkhadi with uh, other plants. Rafael, you, you guys have, a, have, I believe, a bullish outlook on Natco and there is an event that happened which led Natco to fall down double digits. Now, what's the view currently on Natco Pharma? Uh, so the view remains bullish. Uh, so what has happened essentially is the Supreme Court has agreed to review Teva's uh, uh, plea about Copexon's uh, patent, which expires in September 2015. So earlier the Genrix were allowed to enter the market at 2000, in May 2014, uh, you know, after the appeals court uh, you know, rejected Teva's plea. Now, what happens in this case is uh, probably Natco will uh, go ahead and launch at risk, uh, you know, and if they do that, uh, there can be various scenarios. So if, if they launch at risk and, you know, the Supreme Court gives a verdict in their favor, then actually this can be a, a, a you know, blessing in disguise for them. Um, and the positives would be even higher uh, from COPEX on. In case if they, you know, I mean, if they, if they launch at risk and the Supreme Court decides against them, you know, in that case they will have, they'll be liable for a penalty to Teva. Uh, 
but and at the same time they also go out of the market and relaunch the drug in September 2015. So that will give Teva more time to switch their patients from uh, 20 mg to the 40 mg version. So I think that will erode the generic market. So overall, I mean, the, right now we are working with certain scenarios, but the view still remains uh, pretty bullish. Uh, you know, even in the worst case scenario, we don't see a. Uh, we have taken off uh, around, we have shaved off around 125 rupees, 124 rupees from the target price and I don't see any more downside from there on. Uh, so view remains bullish, we are positive with a buy rating of uh, around, uh, with a target price of around 940 or rupees. Some of the other topics within this basket? Uh, so we are, in the large caps, we are bullish on no, uh, Lupin. Uh, the only uh, issue that we see in Lupin is the technical issue which is that FI limit uh, you know, not being high. So they are trying to increase that limit, uh, but we don't know when that is going to happen. So I mean, if, if that is probably, uh, you know, taken off, then I think uh, fundamentally we remain very pretty uh, bullish on the pipeline, which is going to be materializing next one year. So they just recently launched Niaspan. They are expected to launch Glumets, uh, Ranagil, uh, Yaz. So they have a very strong pipeline coming up in the next one, one and a half year. So I think that the, the view is pretty bullish on Lupin. Uh, even on Cadilla, we believe it's a turnaround story now, uh, given the fact that their U.S. business has not been performing for the past two, three years, and now it's broken the jinx and you know it's it's broken the 300 million dollar uh, yearly mark which they were there you know doing. So last quarter we have seen a 25 million dollar uh, you know Q and Q jump, and I think that is going to continue because of the approvals that we see uh, recently. So I think uh, you know so we we were we have been bullish on Cadilla and Lupin for quite some time now, and the view remains the same now. Rafael, before we let you go, uh, you've spoken about a few large caps and an Atco Pharma. Anything in the in the smaller, not too often spoken about pharma names that you have a positive view on? Uh, so one stock we like uh, is Marxens Pharma. I mean, we've not. Uh, I think it's a, a so probably one of the concerns in the stock was their FCCBs, uh, which uh, you know they've very recently repaid. I think only five million, so out of fifty million dollars, it's only five million dollars which is remaining. Plus, they have also turned profitable. So, I think that would be one name which we are positive on. We don't have coverage yet uh, on that name.